Hi everybody. I'm going to do something right now that I thought I would never ever do. I am going to make a completely ridiculous face alongside the item that I'm going to talk about on this video in the hopes that it will be stupid enough for the YouTube algorithm to recommend this to many people. What I am going to talk about is this, and I'm now going to make said face to post on the beginning of the video. I hope that was ridiculous enough. What we're going to talk about today is the use of this. It's a very common product called Deoxit, and this is the red stuff, not to be confused with the green Deoxit fader lube which is right here and its subsequent use <laughs> in the electronics uh, and namely the audio and guitar amplifier industry. I'm currently working on a project right now and this is the third time in recent history that I've run into this problem and full disclosure I'm not blaming people I am absolutely guilty of this same thing and I had to learn the hard way why <laughs> using this the wrong way actually makes things worse and not better. If you go back several videos, I did a uh, tune-up video on my Pioneer SA7500 integrated amplifier. And one of the things I did was several years ago I restored that amplifier and I use it on my computer upstairs all the time and I noticed that the volume control was getting not right and you know for something I had just cleaned and treated with deoxit like the internet always tells us to do it was getting worse and worse come to find out that this stuff is the absolute enemy of potentiometers and it's not just any potentiometer, but carbon potentiometers, the ones that are made of carbon composite. What they do to make these potentiometers, now I'm talking about these kinds, this is a stereo one, is they take that carbon and they powder it, it's like a powder, and then they compress it and they make the little carbon track that's resistive. And then a little wiper goes across that track to pick off the different resistances as you rotate your volume knob or your control. And as the story goes, you see time and again on thousands and thousands of videos on the internet that people treat it with this, you know, it, it has become almost a synonymous uh, saying. It's synonymous with cleaning where people will say, I deoxed the controls. And what they meant was they used this product in most cases and they sprayed the potentiometers. What I found, and the reason I'm doing this video is to warn you, do not use this on potentiometers. I'll show you the project I'm working on right now. Again, if you go back, I told you about the 7500. If you go a couple videos ago, I did a restoration on a Marantz 2285B that had the same problem with a bad pot. And each one of these has been a result of being treated with deoxit red. So you can see all the controls here. This is a tube amplifier that I'm working on, a tube receiver. It doesn't matter what kind it is. You'll see the video later. But here's the volume control. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. I have the leads of my meter connected from the wiper of this pot to one end. So what should happen is when we rotate the pot all the way clockwise right now, these two should be shorted together because the wiper is now all the way at the end of the pot. And as I rotate it further away, the resistance should get bigger. So right now the wiper is all the way over on this end, so this should be the highest resistance it can be. And of course there's circuitry in here that, that will affect the reading, but you'll get the point. If we look at our meter, 
we're on times 100,000 so right now we have about 250k of resistance and this is a 500k pot and that could be that there's circuitry in there if I begin to rotate it let me I want to make sure that you can see all this if we start to rotate the potentiometer see what happens it goes the resistance goes up then drops then it begins to drop and I get all the way down and it drops again and the lowest it'll go now <laughs> is just under 100,000 ohms you see that it's about 80k now this should be shorted out and if I move it around you can see it kind of jumps around let's go over to the other element because this is a stereo pot so there are two elements in this potentiometer two pots and connected to the same shaft and if we move this one see what happens to it when I get towards the one end it goes crazy it, it's as it's going this way that means that it's that it's going open in other words the contact is not making good con the wiper is not making good contact with the carbon and if I go down same thing what you just saw was a result of using this this is deoxid red and its actual purpose it doesn't say it doesn't say on the can here really but it does say things like cleaner audio clearer video reliable data it makes you think that you would spray this in a potentiometer and nowhere does it really tell you not to use on carbon pots, you know, like carbon potentiometers. And it tells you about how it's dangerous if you breathe it or drink it or whatever. But nowhere does it really say. It just says connections. So you can see, nowhere does it tell you that you shouldn't use it on potentiometers, but you shouldn't. <laughs> what it does is it eats the carbon track. Let me show you what those look like. Okay, here's a new old stock part. This is a rebuild kit for a potentiometer. And if you look, I can get it out of a little bag here. This is what's inside the pot. Okay, so this little wafer that you see here with the wires or with the terminals on it, that's what this is. Okay, so if we put it into this orientation, that's what you have. And if you look, the wiper makes contact. Let me see if I can get this focus between this outer ring, which is connected to the center, and this little carbon track. See this black little track around here? That's made of powdered carbon. And it's only press fit on there with these rivets. And what happens is when you spray this stuff on there, it eats this carbon. It will damage it. Now this and this are different. They look kind of similar, how they, you know, advertise them, other than the two different colors. But this one is actually, neither one of them say anything about carbon comp potentiometers. But this is actually safe for them. It will work. This is not. The active ingredient in this is designed for switch contacts. So if you look down here, these little switches, they're working wonderfully. And if I zoom way down on it, you can see how wet it is here. You can see that that gets on there, and you can see where these have been really, really sprayed with this stuff quite a bit. And you can tell that the the fiber in here gets. Let me see if I can. The fiber in here kind of gets it soaks up all of that deoxid 
and you see and then it all the dust goes in there from it so it it's okay on contacts it's not okay for these pots it damages them and it's getting to the point now that I get these things in and and if you buy them on eBay and they say just recently serviced by technician all controls cleaned it means a lot of times that people took this red deoxid and just sprayed the inside of these pots like a cat in heat and all it does is damage this carbon track so I'm saying this is a warning because I learned it the hard way and I think that it's one of those things where it's on the internet and everybody's talking about you know using deoxid because it's such good stuff well it is good stuff if you use it for what it's intended for but it's not good stuff if you use it for the wrong purpose so we're gonna have to disassemble these pots sometimes you can clean this gook off of there uh, and repair the pot sometimes you can't so I'm going to attempt to repair this first one if I'm successful great if not we have to put a new one in unfortunately this one I showed you that's almost identical this one's a 1 mega ohm pot this one's a 500k so it's not not interchangeable so I'm going to take this out and I'll go over with you how to clean this control okay when you remove the potentiometer this is what it's going to look like and you have to just disassemble it one piece at a time and you'll see that this all comes off kind of like in layers so the first thing we have to do is we have to bend these tabs to get these little back caps off now you have to be very careful because you can only bend these so many times and then they get work hardened and they'll snap off when you go to bend them again so you only get one or two tries at this so you got to do it right number one I always kind of get down here on the body not up here because I don't want to score this to make it crack and I take a, a pair of sharp wire cutters or even these little skinny ones and I'll come down here like this and I pry in and just take this off like that and I just want to lift it off to get this under there first you can also use a really small screwdriver or something like that but I just get them started and then I'll use a pair of pliers to straighten it out that way I'm not putting a sharp object on that corner and I'm just levering it off just a little bit at a time I'm letting the, I'm letting the serrations of the pliers do the work and I'm not really trying to pinch anything real hard and you bend them open and it should come apart so we should be able to get this off up oh, I got to get this side one off too I forgot this part here there we go now it's ready to come apart and if we pull this off it'll come off in pieces so see how tight that is we're going to talk about this more in a minute and there's the inside of the pot now the first thing I want you to look at is this stuff right here see this kind of brownish looking stuff and it, it's almost like candle wax see how hard it is I don't know if you can see that up close and there's more of it in here see it right there and yet more of it <laughs> around the inside of here and what that is believe it or not it's called friction grease now that sounds almost like an oxymoron huh grease is supposed to remove friction well it does in a way but it's a special type of grease and you ever notice a brand new potentiometer how it has that glide feel to it it's real smooth but it has that little bit of resistance when you turn it almost like kind of gel that's because of that grease when you spray that deoxid in there it literally dissolves that and washes it away 
allowing any kind of corrosion or crud to get in there and it also allows the pot to wobble ever so slightly in there and the pot will move really easily kind of do you ever feel uh, you know something that someone you know you got from somewhere and they said we we serviced it and cleaned the controls well they cleaned all that right out if you don't put some type of friction grease back in there it's not going to work right and friction grease is extremely expensive and it's very hard to find so there are some other products and I'll show you one that I use that will work but anyway there's two things you need to look at in here you have this contact here the set of contacts and then you have another set of contacts right here okay you see those and the inner contacts touch this ring and this ring is connected to this pin down here and the outer wiper contacts are your actual wipers that make contact with this carbon element now let's look at this carbon for a minute it has been cleaned and serviced apparently or you know what they said but if you look look how look at those two shiny looking tracks on the carbon see them this is from that deoxid stuff <laughs> it's not good so we're going to need to clean that so I'll show you how I do that first okay the first thing you want to do is take some cotton swabs I like these ones that are for makeup because the cotton is a lot tighter woven than on a normal ear swab so I like these makeup ones. I take anhydrous isopropyl alcohol and I begin by first of all just going around this thing and just cleaning off as much crud as I can. And the alcohol is not going to hurt the carbon. It's going to evaporate immediately and it's just going to take any surface grunge and any of that deoxid oil and you can see what it looks like when it comes off and it's just going to remove that and we're hoping that this pot is still good okay and we're going to clean all this tarnish and everything off okay just like that now where the wiper makes contact with the carbon and where it makes contact with the center piece is very important. So I will use one of these fiberglass scratch brushes. You can buy them online very cheap. And this ring, I'm just going to clean off with it. And you can see it'll polish it. It'll make it look just like new. See that? Okay, and then I'll just clean the tarnish off of this middle contact because I don't want that tarnish to eat away the metal and corrode it. The rest of it looks pretty good yet. And you can see that's a lot cleaner already, but you could still see there's some marks on there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some of this. This is the same thing as the spray. But if you notice, this says 5 and this says 100. This has 5% of this mixed in with it. And the rest of it is all mineral spirits and cleaning agents to clean off corrosion and things and clean dirt away. And then it'll leave this behind. So this is really concentrated stuff. And this is really all we need. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put one drop there it is that's it then I'm going to take a cotton swab and it's the swab is going to absorb a lot of it but we're also going to spread this out here a little bit okay and just give it a second to soak in there then I'm going to take the other side of the swab and wipe the excess off. I don't want a whole ton of that on there. All right. 
that's it. I'm then going to take a little bit of this red stuff that I told you not to use. <laughs> and this is, again, this is 100%. And it's the same as this stuff, except it doesn't have the cleaning agents in it, once again. And it goes on the metal contact out here. And again, just a tiny drop is all you need. Now when that wiper goes around there, it'll spread that around. But I notice I did not get any of it on the actual carbon. Okay. I'm going to put that aside for now. We're now going to take this part, which is in here, and we remove this, and this could be a little bit tight, but it pops out. And you can see there's like a little notch there, and there's a flat on either side. There you go. And that goes down inside there. That reveals these four tabs that have to come out. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get them loosened with a sharp object, like a little tiny screwdriver. And then I'm going to get my pliers again in the same manner, just very gently pry them up and out. I shake the camera all over the place because I'm working around it. Hopefully I'm not making too big of a mess out of it. Kind of hard to see. I'm leaning on the camera, <laughs> or the camera stand I should say. I'm reaching around here. Am I in frame? There. Okay, and then this should come off once we get it loose enough. But you have to get these bent just right. Okay. And we should be able to go like this. And like this. And make sure you pay attention to how this all comes apart. It all has to be oriented in the correct way. And if you look inside, there's more of that grease that has dried out. See it? So I'm going to take that off. And if you notice the, the cutout down here for these on this side and the little notch for the loudness tap right here. And this is the loudness tap we were talking about in earlier videos. Now, the next part is to get these off. <laughs> so we're going to take that that, this, and this, and then we're going to very carefully, and I know some of you who've done this a lot of times have your own little method, and if it worked for you for many years, I would suggest sticking with it. This is what's worked for me. I've had the best results. I don't have very many problems, and I, this is how I do it. Okay, now this comes off, and this metal part is going to fall off. So you want to keep them together, like that. And you want to make sure, some of these are shaped different than this. This one is the same either way around, but some of them have, you know, a curve on the top and a flat on the bottom. Make sure you mark it, and when in doubt, Sharpie is your friend. Take a Sharpie and just mark it so you know. Okay. If we turn around, we have the same thing here. And you can see this ring is really dirty on this one. And the track is cruddy, same way. So we're going to do the same treatment to it. All right. We're going to take this. I'm just going to keep the camera rolling, and then I will edit out uh, the parts that aren't necessary here if I can. And again, I do the carbon first so we don't contaminate anything. Then we're going to get this. 
And we're going to go around like that. Then we're going to take our little drop of the green stuff. And again, one drop. And I'm going to wipe this on. Then we're going to take our one drop of the red stuff and just put it right there. Like that. That's it. No more. And this one's ready to go. Okay, well something ugly happened. <laughs> I actually had all the video shot for two different videos. One was for the uh, the current project I'm working on, which is a Fisher 800B, and the other was for cleaning the pots. And my camera got reversed when, you know, if you hit the button too fast, the record button, which is very tiny and kind of recessed into the top of the camera, if you hit it too fast, it starts to record and then stops again and you don't realize it. So you think you're recording something and nothing's happening. And then if you push the record button again <laughs> to stop the video, it starts it. So you have all kinds of video clips of me moving things around but not doing anything. And for the whole session I was down here for a couple of hours, that's what I got. So I did get the first part of cleaning this pot uh, that stereo pot, but I missed the last part of it, along with the first part of my receiver video. So I'm going to have to redo this second part on another potentiometer, because the pot's already installed and working. So this is the same kind of pot, but it is just a single element one instead of a dual stereo one. It goes together just the same, so we did the cleaning on it, and we are now up to the point right where we put the little drop of red stuff here. There we go. And that'll spread around when we put the what we put the thing back together. And we were just getting ready to do the work on these contacts on the other one. So I'll demonstrate on this one. Now this one had a lot of that yucky grease stuff on it too and we cleaned some of I cleaned some of it off you could see a little bit down in here and we can just wipe it out just like so and clean it off of here it gets kind of sticky so you want to kind of remove it and we're going to clean the inside of of this and this is where the shaft goes through like so, and then get all of the residue off. And we're ready. Okay, once again, we have more of that grease stuff, and I'll show you. You can see it right down here. It's down here, and this one, it was still in decent shape. Some of it dries and turns into wax, but it kind of gets all over the place. I, I clean it all off. All right. Now we're going to clean these little contacts. So the first thing I do is I take some alcohol, once again, some anhydrous isopropyl, and I just very gently clean any dirt off. And you got to watch because it'll get caught on the edge of these little wipers. They're very delicate. They'll bend. You don't want to do that. And that'll just get the grease and whatever off of there. Then I very carefully get the scratch brush, and this is where you have to be really careful. And I just clean the contact area. I'm really mostly concerned about the part that actually touches the carbon. We want it to be nice and clean. Don't use a real coarse scratch brush if you're going to use one. Um, use the fine one. And you can, like I said, you can order these online. They're pretty easy to... Very good. Once that's done, we do the other side. And this is the part that, that uh, comes in contact with the ring, the inner ring. And we want to clean that off just, as, just the same. Don't use any kind of sandpaper or anything on this. Just 
some anhydrous isopropyl and something like this scratch brush or something very delicate that's not going to bend or damage these little brass contacts. Okay, the next stuff we're going to use, and this is just because I have it and I found that it works really well for this, is this fader grease. And again, I'm not shilling for deoxit. It just happens to be stuff that's available to me and it works. It's expensive, but you use so little of it that it lasts a really long time. I don't use large amounts of it. Now, this is safe to use on pots for to take place of that um, friction grease. Uh, there are some other greases I'm sure you can use, and I don't have any particular name brands. And you can go online and to places like McMaster Car and so forth, and you can do a search for friction grease, and you're going to find two problems with it. Number one, they only sell it in pretty large quantities, more than you would need in the, for a very long time. And second of all, it is extraordinarily expensive because of the large quantity. So it's just not worth it. Um, if they ever start selling it in small containers, once again, that would be awesome. But I've yet to find a source for it that I would consider affordable. So with that in mind, this, this DFG 213 grease is the closest thing I could find to friction grease and it works so that's what we're going to go with now what I do is I want to put some of it down in here and I just take and put like a little dollop of it in there or bead or whatever you want to call it and then I just use this tip because it's just right and I just spread it inside there and that takes care of that then I take a little tiny bit and I'll put it on the back here and I'll put a little bit right here on the shaft and then I'll just kind of spread it around a little bit and that's it now this is going to help give it that smooth feel to it so it's not going to be like real floppy loose like when you normally clean these things. That's what I don't like about it. So we're going to now, we're going to take this, we're going to place it back over here and try not to get the grease all over everything. Okay. And we are going to put this back over here like so and we want to make sure everything lines up and again the other pot the stereo one that we did was the same same deal and then I kind of just hold tension on it like this with my fingers and then you can put the back on and again the opening the wide opening goes with the terminals and this part back here is going to seat in this little dimple right there and this pot has an opening in the back so you and it has this little actuator right here that you can actually add a switch uh, if you want it to be a switched potentiometer and it just clips on there just like this as well so I just take this and put it on and we line it up and you should feel a little spring tension see how it kind of tries to hold itself up See how it's like springing back when I let it go? And that's good because that's those contacts. You want those to be making good contact with the, with the carbon. And then all I do is I take my big pliers and I pinch these back over. And I'll go diagonally first just so it'll hold it, everything in place like that. And again, I use the, the serrations of the pliers push it together just like that and if we got this right it should run pretty smoothly this pot was a new old well it was yeah it was new old stock but it was all the grease was dried out and uh, it was kind of crusty 
because it wasn't stored in a box or anything. It was just thrown in a bin. <laughs> so let's see if we were able to get this to work well. We'll see how it works after we did all the service. And remember, that dual pot that we started the video with, it, we did the same process on it. Unfortunately, we lost that footage. Okay, we have the meter set up. And I believe this is only a 100 ohm pot. It's not like a 500K, so I had to set the scale on the meter for that. But it, it's the same test. You're doing the same thing. And the first thing we want to do is go from end to end. So we should read our 100 ohms. And if we look here, pretty close to 100 ohms there. Because we're on times 10. Now we will go from the wiper to one end. Okay, just like that with our meter. And if we turn it, nice and smooth. That's what we want. And if we move from here to the other end, we should get the same results, only backwards. So now, when we turn it all the way up, it goes down. We, or clockwise, I should say makes the resistance go down as the wiper goes towards this pin. Okay. Very, very good. So we have the stereo pot reinstalled and it works perfectly and it tracks perfectly so we were able to save it by doing that service to it. And now when we turn it, it actually feels really smooth. That grease gives it just enough resistance that it doesn't feel real loose and sloppy. And there's no more noise in the pot. So everything is good. And I hope that clears that up. Now, normally, if somebody has not sprayed red deoxid in there, you can take the green stuff and just put a little squirt inside each opening there and work it back and forth and it will work. You don't have to do what we just did. If you do get red deoxid in there, somebody does that. I take a cleaner like this, which is, this is just one name brand, but they make this same stuff. Many, many manufacturers make this. It is very basic, but it should say quick drying, safe for plastics. Uh, and that's really what you want. This stuff doesn't leave any residue. All it does is it just cleans off any of the oils or debris that's inside there. This is kind of like just washes everything out. And that will clean out the pot. It'll get rid of all that uh, friction grease as well. You have to watch. But it will clean all the crud out. Sometimes when somebody really hoses these things down with the, with the red deoxid, this just can't get it all out. And then you have to do what we just did in this video. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so that's how I do these, you know. Now, moving forward, if I get one that nobody, you know, a pot that's just noisy and nobody has done anything to it, again, little shot of the green stuff, or they make other control cleaner that is not made by keg chemicals, you know, other stuff, and it works well, it works just as well. So it's not that, you know, you don't have to spend all that money on that. But normally, like I said in your previous videos, I start out by cleaning the dirt out with this and just put the tiniest little bit of this in there and work the control back and forth, and that usually takes care of it. You don't have to get red deoxid and just embalm these things with a half a gallon of it. I don't know why I see that so much, but I really do. I've seen, you know, amplifiers, solid state ones with circuit boards where the whole circuit board gets soaked with that stuff. And one other thing I want to bring up just before we close. This is a selector switch, and you see these in many, many different types of electronics, especially older electronics. And as a matter of fact, in this receiver we're working on, this Fisher, there's one right there. They use them all over the place. This is the type of contact you can see down in here 
that you would use the deoxit red on. See how tarnished that is? And I use it by putting it on something like this and then kind of trying to go like that. I clean it off. I don't spray this directly with it. And the reason being is this brown stuff, it can be made of Bakelite, it can be made of some type of fiberboard, or uh, different types of materials, and some of this wafer board stuff is susceptible to the red deoxid. When it soaks in there, that red deoxid will actually break this stuff down. It's just this is this is just stuff that's glued together. It's you can see it's kind of like fibers that are it you know pressed together with adhesive, and the red deoxid will actually break this stuff down. I did a video a while back on a SX42 by Halicrafters. It was a very difficult project to work on, and one of the selector switches just disintegrated. It just cracked all of the all of the little terminals were breaking off and it was because it had been so heavily sprayed with deoxid that this stuff became brittle. It's almost like when you get cardboard and soak it in water it just falls apart. So be careful with that. Be sparing with that red deoxid because it can damage certain things. It's really good for metal surfaces, these metal contacts, these pins. See how these are green already? This is new old stock but you can see how tarnished it's gotten. And that red deoxid, if you take a little bit of it, here it is here, we put some on a little swab, just kind of wet it like that, and you see how dirty it is right now down in there, see that? If I just go to a certain area of it, and I just scrub it with this stuff, I don't even need too much, just a little bit you can see already just a couple little wipes with it it's already starting to take it off there where I was wiping and you can see the tarnish comes right off and you do that and that'll keep this from soaking in I'll show you I'll put a little drop here and you see what happens to it it just absorbs it it sucks it right in there look the whole thing's wet now just that little drop and that's why I said you have to be careful with this stuff. So I hope that helps. And uh, from now on, maybe, uh, again, this is all stuff I learned the hard way. I abused <laughs> this chemical as well and didn't use it properly, and I've damaged a few controls from it. So I'm doing this not to criticize others, but as a warning from my own experience. Well, thanks for listening to my rant, and as always, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives, and, uh, well, don't stand on these, because you don't want to be high on pot. And while we're on the subject of deoxid, let me present to you Exhibit A. This is the original can, how they used to package it. And if you noticed, it has a very traditional type nozzle that you put one of these ubiquitous red straws into. And it even has a spray adjust where you can control the flow rate of the spray. This is awesome because you don't waste a lot of product for how expensive this is. I don't know what genius at Keg Chemicals decided this was a better idea, but look at the abomination that they put in here later on. First of all, this straw, I don't know why they have to put a piece of the Alaskan pipeline on here. I don't need enough flow rate, you know, to 100 gallons a minute. This goofy joint here, what is the point of this? And the straw is permanently attached. Why would I want that? Uh, I'm not worried about losing it. I mean, if I lose this little red straw, I can go to my local landfill or my local sea turtle, and I can get a couple thousand of these things. Every can on earth comes with one, so we have tons of them. And it's nice to remove them. Maybe you may want to just go full on cat in heat and totally 
embalm and saturate an entire board. Or maybe you want to put the straw in there and actually it's small enough to fit inside of a pot. This on the other hand has none of those benefits and you end up modifying it like I did. Or you can buy their little thing that slips over there. In addition you get this weird looking hinge that leaks all over the place. And while I appreciate the fact that the leaking chemical going all over my finger may prevent me from ever getting arthritis in my finger, I would rather the product go into the place that I want it to go. This thing is goofy, it falls off, it's big and bulky. You know, keg chemicals, you can do better than this. You really can.